Bloody hell, are we still doing these? A handbag? Yes, it is loot crate time again. Well, actually, I wanted to get them done a bit earlier, because as I've said in previous months, I'm trying to catch up with the fact that I'm quite late with them. But I was somewhat scuppered by the fact that I'm out to lose my voice for several days. And in fact, it's still not quite working properly, so I might sound a bit weird on this. I actually had it come back uh, almost entirely on Saturday, and then did a talk at the Norwich Gaming Festival, and it totally killed it again. But hey, I'll just have to keep doing horrible noisy coughs. <coughs> There, did you enjoy that? Right, what's in Loot Crate this month? This month's theme is a thing. I'm guessing weird cuts on the top of the box. I don't know what you can form this out into later. A life-size model of Diogenes or something. Anyway, let's have a look what's inside. And we can hazard a guess. I quite like trying to guess what the theme is, actually. Well, we're starting off with... Oh, it's Destiny. Look, uh, uh, I don't know why I said R, as if I'd have known it would be Destiny just from cuts in the box. Anyway. Q fig time again, everyone. We've had a lot of these recently, haven't we? It's Rocket and Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy 2. I was going to say, well, they looked about the same in the first one, but of course Groot looks completely different due to being a massive tree in the first one and a little old cute guy in the second one. Um, yeah, I mean, I say what I always say about these things, then. I mean, they're much better than Funko Pops and stuff, but still the big head aesthetic, which does nothing for me whatsoever. Also, as I have said before, these Q-Figs keep turning up in um, B&M bargains here in the UK for a couple of quid, still with the Loot Crate exclusive uh, sticker on usually, although this one doesn't have one, you'll notice. <clears throat> but it is an adult collectible not intended for use by children. Children use them as particle accelerators. It never ends well. Also, I've had several reports that the old Q-Fig um, things you got in the Loot Crates, like the Deadpool ones and that, have turned up in certain pound worlds. I don't know if that's true, because I haven't been able to uh, actually go and check in my local one. Well, I have been checking my local one, but they didn't have them. Um, but I have seen photographs, so, mmm, jury's out. You never know. Right, Rocket and Groot, you go over there and I'll sell you later. <clears throat> T-shirt is the goody... Oh. <laughs> The Goonies, not the goodies. That would be astonishing. If you don't know what the goodies was, it's an old 70s television program here in the UK, a sort of comedy thing aimed at a young audience, and uh, it's very popular at the time and really does not stand up at all. I watched some again recently. It wasn't good. Anyway, had a couple of classic bits. Also, the goodies is, I think, the only television program in history where somebody actually died laughing watching it. Um, a sequence where some people are beating each other up with big black puddings. And, um, yeah, he was somewhat overly tickled by it and uh, died laughing at it, which, I don't know, if you're a comedy writer, it's a hell of a thing to say somebody died laughing at my material, but equally, <clears throat> make it feel a bit bad, wouldn't it? Right. The Goonies. Never say diet. No, die. And here's a skull and crossbones. No, skull and crossed scimitars. Cutlass. That's the word I'm looking for. Skull and crossed cutlasses. The Goonies never say die. Surely if the, when the Goonies always refer to themselves as Goonies rather than the Goonies. Hmm, not being quite right. But hey, it's a nice 80s reference shirt. I like the ones that aren't black because it makes a difference. And um, yeah, it feels nice and soft as well. That's good. like that shirt. I'll wear that at some point. Oh my god. There's not much else in there actually. Art of Colouring, Star Wars, 30 Images to Inspire Creativity. It's one of these mandala colouring books. Well, some of it's just like a normal kid's colouring book, looking at it. And, yeah, you can go in and colour them. And it's, it's uh, not got that many pages. Um, not too bad. 30 images. There we are. I must say that I did buy a book remarkably similar to this recently for £2. Actually, let's jump cut. I'm going to go and get it. Boom, here it is. Art Therapy Star Wars, an anti-stress colouring book. I'm not entirely sure it would uh, stop stress, just let you colour some stuff, but hey, it's a bit of mindfulness or something, isn't it? No, I basically bought it because it was two quid and I thought some of the designs might be quite cool. In fact, there was quite a cool design already. What was that one? No, not Yoda heads, that's creepy. Ugh, weird Vader thing. But yeah, it's it's very nice. There's far more than 30 in there and, uh, hmm. Hmm, are they from the same company? Originally this was £11 though, bloody hell. I wouldn't spend that on it. I wouldn't spend half that on it. Um, no, this is Disney Press, and this one is Edgemont. But hey, could just be different publishers for different uh, regions of the world, for these things do occur. Oh, hang on. Oh, bloody hell, more... <laughs> We've got pencils two months in a row. <laughs> 
Um, right, so these are just coloured pencils, presumably for use with the colouring book. Um, get that out of the way, as that wasn't actually in the loot crate. Um, and a, sh a sharpener. Yeah, last month we had the uh, X Files branded pencils, didn't we? Which, incidentally, I sold for ten pounds. Can you believe that? It was like I got more for that than anything else in the box. I think. Um, there's another one. All your favourite colours. Baby's diarrhoea. Blood. Neon. I think it's just 80s, actually, is the name of that colour. Um, yeah, so they're unsharpened in. They're just sort of generic, really, and cheap. And uh, they look, well, they're of decent quality, but you know what I mean. Got a Loot Crate logo on the box for some reason. Not that that particularly matters. Um, yeah, that's... Well, I can see why they put them in for that reason. And to be fair, this probably cost them very, very little, as they are generic other than the box. So, oh well, I don't think that's taken away from anything else in there. Although, having said that, there's no bugger all else in there. We've got the pin badge. Oh, it's Ang. Sorry, Ang, or whatever they called him in that awful, awful uh, M. Night Shyamalan film. Uh, the uh, last airbender there with his big arrow going into avatar mode, or whatever it was he did. Again, that's a really, really nice badge. They've really been knocking it out of the park with these recently. Slightly disappointed that last month's had the Loot Crate logo on again, but they have stopped their evil ways and gone back to just really nice pins. I should put that to one side and give it to somebody who likes Avatar more than I did. Um, I've never properly watched it, but it looks very good. And that's it, other than this Destiny 3 patch set. Okay. I'm going to guess there's patches in here, and there will be a positive number of them, probably an integer between two and four. Uh, what do you actually get then? Wow. Hunter, Warlock, and Tit Ann. That sounds rude. Um, yeah, that's iron on badges, little ones, little very plain looking ones actually. Useful for cosplayers, I suppose. Well, mm, that's not much, is it? That's one of those things that, uh, yeah. Well, it doesn't feel too advertisey in the sense that they are, you know, decent items, but um, I don't know, I thought they'd be a bit more in depth than that, but never mind. And the book, oh, it's Guardians this month. Ha, ah, hence Guardians of the Galaxy. And the, this weird thing that they're doing that I really cannot be asked with. Let's have a quick look at the book. God, that was fun, wasn't it? And that's it. Yeah, a little bit uh, lacklustre this month. You basically get good t shirt, one of them figures, thin colouring book, a couple of badges. So, and some pencils. That was nice though. Well, <clears throat> I was hoping you'd get something Batman so that I could segue into talking about our Sequelizers podcast, of which the latest episode is about Batman Forever. Um, if I haven't, uh, we haven't heard you talk about it before, it's a podcast we do where we have two teams and they are given a film. But the film is a sequel to a good film. But the sequel itself was not very good. It was disappointing. And we come up with pitches for ideas for making the... Uh, I was going to say for making the sequel better, but really we pitch entirely different ideas for how we think the sequels should have been. And it's all very good fun. It's proving very popular and uh, we're all very happy about it. You can find it at sequelizers.com and, you know, you can get it on iTunes and Stitcher and all them things what do podcasts like... Wait for it. Boom. This thing is massive and quite heavy. Right, so this is a bit different to normal. This isn't something that was sent in. I actually bought it locally from the uh, film and television store in Norwich. What is it called, the television and film store? I can't remember. Anyway, I bought it there and it was £20. And it's really big and quite heavy, uh, as I think I just said. And basically, I think they had stock out back that it wasn't selling for one reason or another, so they just stuck loads of it in boxes and uh, selling them off cheap. Which is the kind of thing that interests me. And look, it's got an L on it. That means the T-shirt inside is large. Or T-shirts, possibly. I don't know. But I'm quite interested to see what's in it. And I've had it sitting around a while. So I've been a good boy and not given in to temptation. But what is in the amazing mystery box? They did say in the shop that the contents are incredibly variable. Because a lot of the stuff they've put in a box, like, they just didn't have another one of. So, could be, could be interesting. Right. We all oh, good. God, there's a lot of stuff in here, man. Right. Well, let's start off with a game pack of Star Wars Pocket Model oh, Collectible. Good God, didn't we? We got some of these in a the loot crate like years ago, didn't we? And they used to be in Poundland before that. Well, not interested in those. Then go straight in the bin. Um, oh, good Lord. World of Warcraft Mega Blocks Series 1. I did these once, didn't I? On a blind bag thing. Oh, my goodness. Shall we see which one it is? Go on. There's no point. Uh, 
holding it back for a blind bag episode, I've already done it. And it is, it is an elf of some type, a night elf, I believe. And look, he's got his stick because he's probably like a druid or an aircraft controller or a lollipop lady. Right, <clears throat> next t-shirt with Hannibal on, as in the Mads Mikkelsen uh, television series. Hmm, interesting, a sort of white t-shirt with a picture of him on being creepy. Um, and yeah, as it goes down, you can see musculature is revealed to give it a more creepy look. That's, uh, hmm. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I hear it's quite a good series. I haven't seen it, but is it something you'd really want a t-shirt of? I can probably guess why that doesn't sell, to be honest. Next up, ooh, Jurassic World t-shirt. Right, let's all say at the same time, I wish it was Jurassic Park, but it isn't. Still good design, still good logo. Um, just different colouring with a different word on here. Yeah, like that. Next, oh my god. DC Universe, White Lantern Sinestro versus Green Lantern. Man, them some designs on those. Look how chiselled they are. Look at the giant square hands and uh, missing fingers and stuff. Blimey, what is this about then? Is it a game of some type? Nope, they're just collectibles. So you can also get Superman versus Bizarro, Deathstorm versus Firestorm, all your favourite storms, and The Flash versus Captain Boomerang. Captain Boomerang being a joke character for years, but seems to have got a bit more life after um, Suicide Squad, the movie. Well, not something I particularly enjoy the designs of, but they're all right, I suppose. I've got a friend who likes uh, Green Lantern. That will be going his way, whether he wants it or not. <laughs> Next up, ooh, Marvel Heroes. Contains one figurine and eight sticks. Ooh, that is interesting. Very interesting, right? That is going to be put to one side and used for a blind bag video in the future. I've got to get back into blind bag videos because I've got like 300 blind bags or something ridiculous. They're taking over my life. I think there's another t-shirt at the bottom of this. Next up, oh, it's it's a Dalek, which is like a Dalek, except pronounced incorrectly. Um, Doctor Who logo, what is it? Uh, I think it's just a very, oh, just a very nice notebook. Hmm, can't argue with that. I like ones that are held uh, shut by elastic. I find that very practical. Good stuff. Oh, God, there's a load of bobbleheads. What is it? Sons of Anarchy. Ah. Show I haven't seen, but that one is quite obviously Ron Perlman. The heads must be good sculpts. Don't recognise any of the others. Let's see if you do. Beard Man, Ron Perlman, Lady, Other Beard Man. There, all your favourites. Um, Jax Teller, Clay Morrow, Gemma Teller Morrow. She's got both their surnames. Was she married to one and not the other? That sounds confusing. And Opie Winston. Ah, there they are in real life. Yes, I don't recognise any of the other actors. Mind you, I probably wouldn't recognise him because he's grown a massive beard by the looks of it, but that is clearly Ron Perlman. Good work, sculpting men. But yeah, they're all bobbleheads. I don't particularly like bobbleheads. I'm not particularly interested in that. Never seen the television show. If you're a fan of such things, well, good for you. And oh my god, a Despicable Me mug. <laughs> Well, blimey. Um, I thought anything with minions on sold, but this looks like it's from the first film. Frankly, does it say how much it was at any stage? No. Interesting. I think it's just literally a standard mug. Yep, it's got one of the hair blokes with one eye. Just a friendly bellow! Ah, and, and another bloke with two eyes. Well, that's good. Probably jokes about farts and bananas in there somewhere. Well, never turn a mug down. Um, next. Oh my flippin' aunt! This is one of the old Doctor Who New Adventures things, um... Bloody hell, on the old paperbacks from the 80s. Doctor Who and the Cybermen by Jerry Davis. That's a pretty early incarnation of the Cybermen, where there were basically men in tinfoil suits with uh, baking trays strapped to them. Crikey. <clears throat> a mystery virus is wreaking havoc among the crew of the Earth's weather control station on the moon. While investigations into the strange disease are in progress, International Space Headquarters Earth or Aishi for short, puts the entire moon base into strict, strict quarantine, the Doctor and his companions included. Yeah, but he's got like a fucking trans-dimensional time machine and just piss off wherever he wants. To make matters worse, moon base personnel inexplicably vanish and vital weather control equipment is sabotaged. Who is responsible? Well, the Cybermen. They're, they're on the cover, mate. The director of the base suspects the time travellers. The Doctor fears that the ruthlessly evil Cybermen are at work. Yes, well, that's quite obviously what's happened. UK £1.50. My God, yeah, this is from the 80s. Um, oh, with pictures. I want to see the picture. Where's the picture gone? I can't... Oh, this is irritating. Where is it? Yeah, we were right. It was the Cybermen. 
course, some really crap looking spacesuits they've got there. The old goldfish bowl on the head, and that's all you get. That'll keep out the death of space. I don't want to see this other. Uh, the Graviton Room. I do miss having a Graviton Room in the house, but you know, the prices these days, you just can't afford them. Right, what else have we got? Um, no, I still want to see here. No, novelization copyright 1974. My God. And uh, this was, yeah, this was reprinted in 1984, it has that 80s look, but uh, blimey, it's actually from 1974. It predates all the new adventures. Crikey. Well, that's a thing. Is it actually an adaptation of an old episode? I don't know, and I don't care enough to look. Next up, there's a, a thing, an advertising thing. Subscribe. Oh, you can get it online. Subscribe online and receive two t shirts instead of one. Well, we've already got two. Um, TheAmazingMysteryBox.com. Well, there we are. There's a URL. I didn't know that. What's in yours? That's what we're looking at. Oh good, some more Despicable Me stuff. Little badges. Hmm. I quite like those ones. Um, they're quite an interesting uh, design. A nice way of doing it as opposed to just a picture, like the one in the middle. But yeah, that's not going to excite me greatly. Oh, pens. Hang on. There's two pens, at least. Yeah, I think there's just two. We have Star Wars The Clone Wars. Hey, with an old uh, second wave clone trooper there. Well, it's a chunky pen with a rubber bit, and another one just with a different design and the first wave clone troopers. Hmm, that their Clone Wars series. Not really a fan of that. Quite like Rebels, but um, what I've seen of Clone Wars was not very good. Apparently it got better as it went along. Loved the original um, Tartovsky stuff, you know, the uh, Samurai Jack looking bits and bobs. They were very interesting and good fun, but then the actual CGI thing. Ugh. And that awful film they had released at the cinema. My God, I actually couldn't sit through it. Anyway. Oh, and now more Clone Wars. <laughs> Anakin Yoda Clone Troopers. There we are, just in case you didn't realise. And it's slightly spangly, but there's no clever effect to it. And there is a CGI version of all of them. And you can use it to put your mouse on. And then wonder why you didn't have a mouse map, something a bit better, frankly. And finally, oh my god. Right, one item left, but it's massive. Good lord, it is a Star Trek messenger bag type thing. Based on comic books, I would guess, because uh, it says 15 cents at the top. Voodoo. From across space, it makes its deadly mark on Earth. What, voodoo? That's a strange way of putting it. Blimey. Well, I'm sure this would have been more than 20 quid in the time, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. Hmm. That's right, it's not a bad size. Ah, new, bigger size. Fits an A4 folder. You mean you used to make small ones that didn't fit an A4 folder? I bet they were useful. Ah, oh, well, that's uh, really good. I'll get some use out of that, probably. And it's gold key. Yes, that is a comic thing, isn't it? Ah, no, I won't sit there and pick that off now, but you get the impression. Well, that's a thing, isn't it? Was that worth £20? I don't really know. Um, it certainly was to me, because I got to do a video about it. But uh, I'm very pleased with uh, that bag. And I might actually read that novel at some point. I imagine that'd be quite entertaining in a way. I really like this book as well, the Doctor Who uh, notebook there. <clears throat> and, oh yeah, quite looking forward to doing that uh, Marvel figurine blind bag at some point. And that t-shirt's pretty good, although I'm not so convinced about the Hannibal one. Anyway, jump cut for snack time. I put together the World of Warcraft figure. It looks like this. I must say, the rubber on these uh, shoulder pads has gone a bit sort of... Uh, Dusty and uh, weird, as if it's so maybe they've been those packets for a very long time. Who knows? Not me, because I've got treats to try. Explore the world through food. I don't know what treats are going to be. Oh, I forgot to take the cellar tape off. Hang on. Oh, dear me. There we go. Just open that up with the uh, rather handy uh, knife thing that uh, Gary Larry bought for me for such occasions. Thank you, Gary Larry. Right. Um, was that enough to open it? Oh, I you remember to cut the uh, sellotape and all these things. Right, which month is it this year? No, wait. Which food is it? No, which place? Good God, let's get it right. Which country does this stuff come from this month? <laughs> which year does this hat in brothel from? Right, it is the Cliffs of Moha in Ireland. Moha? Moha? I'm going to... Oh, I can't do that voice when my voice is going. Crikey, that didn't work. Hello from Treats. This month's snacks come to you from the Republic of Ireland. There's going to be some Tato crisps in here. I've, in fact, I've literally just seen them. Enter mystery box giveaway up. Whatever's. <clears throat> so. Oh, no. Well, the problem with Ireland, as a place like this, is it's just going to be stuff I can buy in the UK anyway. We've got a flake. We've got a crunchy. <laughs> 
Oh bloody hell, we've got some custard creams. <laughs> These bourbons or something, yeah. yeah. Oh bloody hell, I suppose these are exciting if you're like in America or something. But literally buy any of these in the shop up the road, Twiglets. Now uh, Jacob, ooh, Marius, I've not... That's interesting, I've never heard of those. They might sell them here, I don't know. Um, some bloody hula hoops. Yeah, Keo's shamrock and sour cream. Okay, that's interesting. That is not a flavor I've tried. Um, tato, cheese and onion. There we are. Tato crisps are really, really good, except for the ones I had that time embedded in chocolate. They were awful. And another crisp I haven't tried, actually. O'Donnell's of Tipperary. It's a long way. Hickory barbecue flavor. Right. Well, I'm not going to, in a video, just eat stuff I can buy. I'm not going to eat twiglets in a video. I'm not going to eat a flake in a video. Oh, my aunt in America used to love flakes and uh, missed them greatly because you couldn't get them over there at the time. We used to send them to her, but the problem with sending people flakes is they crumble to bits. Like, that's part of the advertising on the look. The crumbliest, flakiest milk chocolate. Such a shame. Then they invented uh, flakes with... Um, Chocolate on the outside, which kept them solid, and she was very pleased. Um, what are they called? Twirl? Is that what the twirls are? Oh, I can't remember. That Friday feeling when you, all your teeth disintegrate because you've got honey home, um, honeycomb with uh, chocolate all the way around it. I'm going to eat some Jacob ball. Well, right. Right. We're going to do the crisps and these two biscuits. I'll start with these custard creams because they're one euro and probably not sold here with that on. There's, you know, different currency and all that. Looks very much like a standard custard cream. It is a biscuit with a creamy custard stuff inside. Tastes just like a normal custard cream. Perf perfectly good. Well, that's good. There's so few, I'm not even going to bother jump cutting. I'm just going to go through them all, I think. Um, so these Marietta biscuits, traditional plain biscuits. Could only be eaten on a traditional aeroplane. Um, so what's the deal here? Oh, hang on. Good job, I've got my stab stab knife knife. My god. Now they're out, they just look like rich tea biscuits. I'm gonna have to eat this uh, custard cream. Then we shall see. Hmm. Okay, so this may be um, just, you know, I've got some of the custard cream left in my mouth, so it's impairing the taste slightly. Just a rich tea biscuit. What? 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 All right, potato cheese and onion. I've had these before. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually I'm not going to mind them. They're just nice crisps with cheese and onion flavour. Just good quality. Right now, this will be more interesting, surely. Shamrock and sour cream. It sounds like a really weird musical duo. It smells of well, of crisps actually. Strangely enough. Look like they've been uh, rolled in the grass a bit, which is always nice. Hmm. Not entirely unlike those sour cream Pringles and things, but with a slight sort of tangy kick to them. They're very nice. I've got to say, I didn't know shamrock was edible. I don't really know anything about shamrock at all. Other than the fact, I really like the name. Spudnav. Oh, now we're talking. Field Middleton, variety Lady Claire, cooks by Chris. Thanks, Spudnav. I like to think Spudnav's a superhero who now somewhere is saying, no thanks needed, citizen. Spudnav away. And then he flies off to see where some more potatoes are being grown. <clears throat> Right, O'Donnell's of Tipperary, gluten-free, hand-cooked crisps, hickory barbecue flavour. That sounds nice. Let's find out. There's no spud nav on this one. Well, that's disappointing. Well, that's certainly a crisp. Hmm. Oh, that's pleasant. They're quite subtle. Barbecue flavour crisps are usually quite overpowering, but... Hmm. Fairly subtle. Oh, they've got that sort of quite thick, really nice uh, taste to the uh, crisp, you know, the potato part as well. That's very good. They're very good crisps. Well done, O'Donnells. You have impressed us and win this half of a biscuit. Use it wisely, for not many have such powers. Do you know what? 
because I'm going to be missing out most of the box, because <laughs> it's just stuff, um, I'm going to go and find, if I can remember where I've put it, oh hang on, I've got it to hand. Damn, no I haven't, jump cut. Here we go. So these are not from a treat box. I can't remember where these came from, but I've had them sitting around for a couple of months. They don't go off until August. Wrap snacks, wavy, fabulous. Is, is that a thing? Is that like his name rather than fabulous? New York deli cheddar wavy potato crisps, designed by Mansell. Well, I've got no idea who that fella is, but he's a uh, hip hop rap man, one would guess. Stop trying to skip the struggle. That's where character is built. The hunger for more is created. The lessons for success are taught. So embrace it, feed off it, learn from it, and then overcome it so you can become it. Fabulous. Yes, that's him then. Gotta be honest, they're just bloody crisps, mate. Calm down. Christ. Go on then. New York cheddar. Sorry, dilly cheddar. New York dilly. It's a confusing name. How cheesy do these things smell? Hmm, not much at all, actually. There seems to be a lot of, um, you know, very sort of uh, heavily coloured yellow stuff on them. Oh. Oh, thin potato. Doesn't taste that great. Tastes like it's been reconstituted from something. Probably bigger potatoes. Um, it doesn't really taste of cheese. I don't know what it tastes of. Just sort of salt and stuff, really. I'm not very impressed with those. These are very cheap. These taste cheap, whereas these tasted super ex um, expensive and luxury and posh. You have failed us, Fabolous. Even though you may have a very expensive gold chain and a really quite nifty looking watch. But your crisps are substandard at best. Well, that was a thing, wasn't it? <clears throat> these have got some twiglets for later. Subscribe for more.